Good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer for September 23rd, 2020. This is take two. The first one, the live stream, uh, didn't have any audio, which may or may not be beneficial depending on <laughs> your thoughts. But I guarantee this, it'll be shorter. So that's a good thing. Let's begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. From Psalm 51. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, you delight in truth in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. There's a theme of worship today in the readings and, and the writing as well, and uh, this is a, a beautiful example of that, that we begin our worship service, the traditional worship service, uh, in, in confession, in acknowledging who we are before God, and then hearing those beautiful words of the absolution, that he is the one who washes us and makes us whiter than snow, purges us, so that even though our bones are broken by the, by the fallen nature of this world, by our own sinfulness, we can still rejoice, knowing that God has us in the palm of his hand. So there's the beautiful balance of law and gospel there. The law which breaks us down and makes us realize that in ourselves we have no hope. And then the gospel comes rushing in to that hopelessness and gives us the eternal and everlasting hope that we have in Jesus Christ. And so then we enter into worship together in praise and thanksgiving, eager to hear God's word and receive his gift of salvation in the Lord's Supper. So consider that model of worship again as we hear this reading from Nehemiah chapter 9 and how the people of Israel uh, got together to confess their sin. Now on the 24th day of the month, the people of Israel were assembled with fasting and in sackcloth and with earth on their heads, dirt on their heads. And the Israelites separated themselves from all foreigners and stood and confessed their sins and the iniquities of their fathers and they stood up in their place and read from the book of the law of the Lord their God for a quarter of the day. For another quarter of it, they made confession and worshipped the Lord their God. On the stairs of the Levites stood Joshua, Bani, Kadmiel, Shebaniah, Buni, Sherebiah, Bami, and Chenaniah. And they cried with a loud voice to the Lord their God. Then the Levites, Joshua, Kadmiel, Bani, Hashabeniah, Sherebiah, Hodiah, Shebaniah, and Pethahiah said, Stand up and bless the Lord your God from everlasting to everlasting. Blessed be your glorious name, which is exalted above all blessing and praise. So they begin their day of worship with confession. A quarter of the day. Now, a typical Jewish day was 12 hours, 6 a.m. being the first hour, 6 p.m. being the 12th hour. So they spent three hours in confession and praise, three hours in hearing God's word. Now, I know sometimes I preach a little too long, but keep this in mind, a six-hour church service. <laughs> you are the Lord, you alone. You have made heaven, the heaven of all heavens, with all their hosts, the earth and all that is on it, the seas and all that is in them, and you preserve all of them. And the host of heaven worships you. You are the Lord, the God who chose Abram and brought him out of Ur of the Chaldeans and gave him the name Abraham. You found him, his heart faithful before you and made him, with him the covenant that gave to his offspring the land of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Perizzite, the Jebusite, and the Girgashite. And you have kept your promise, for you are righteous. And it goes on in chapter 9, describing how God has been faithful to the people of Israel. And how he has again and again overlooked their sins and instead brought them out of uh, slavery into the promised land. And so we too follow that same pattern of worship. That we confess our sins before God, uh, spend time hearing his word, praising and worshiping him, and all of it leading up to the reception of the Lord's Supper, his tremendous gift to us. As the people of Israel in this time observe the Passover uh, celebration, the Passover meal, we now on a much more regular basis, every week, are able to receive the Lord's Supper for forgiveness, for strengthening, and for renewal of our faith in Him. And so the last um, a reading is from a, a 
a leader of the church named Benedict of Nursia. He lived in the late fifth and early sixth centuries, and he lived in Southern Italy. And he actually established 12 different monasteries in the mountains in that region. And he was known for his strictness. Uh, he had lots of rules. And he's got a, a writing here called Benedict of Nursia's Advice About Singing. We believe that God is present everywhere and that the eyes of the Lord behold the good and the bad in every place. And that's from Proverbs 15. Let us firmly believe this, especially when we take part in the divine service. Let us therefore always be mindful of what the prophet says. Serve the Lord with fear, from Psalm 2. And again, sing wisely, Psalm 46. And from Psalm 137, I will sing praise to you in the sight of the angels. Therefore, let us consider how it benefits us to behave in the sight of God and his angels. And let us then stand to sing, that our minds may be in harmony with our voices. One of the many beautiful benefits of singing praises to God that Benedict of Nursia mentions here is that as we sing his word, our hearts unite and align with those words that we are singing. It's all about being in God's word, right? So let's begin a time of prayer. Uh, we're going to pray today for uh, a man named Stephen. He is, um, he is related to Kurt Pfeiffer and actually and Kieran Pfeiffer. Um, and he's been diagnosed with COVID, unfortunately. And he's got older parents that have been exposed as well. And actually, uh, Karen's father as well may have been exposed. So we'll pray for them and for, for all the people who are living that similar kind of experience and wondering if they've, if they've got it or not. So let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, uh, first of all, we pray in thanksgiving that you give us this gift of worship, that we are allowed, Lord, because of what Christ has done for us to enter into your presence and to, to sing your praises, to hear the glorious words of absolution, and to enter into your presence with singing, hearing your word, and then, Lord, in the receiving of Christ's body and blood for the strengthening of our faith and the forgiveness of our sins. We thank and praise you for that, Lord, and we pray that you would give strength and patience to all those who are not yet able to receive Holy Communion. Assure them, Lord, by your presence, by your word, that they have your grace and sustained forgiveness through the faith you've given them in Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for Stephen today and for his parents, uh, for Glenn Ratzel as well. Uh, Lord, Stephen has been diagnosed with COVID, so we pray that it is a mild case, and Lord, that uh, he receives the proper care, that he can get over it quickly and safely. We pray, Lord, that his parents and Glenn do not contract that illness, but instead, Lord, that it passes over them. And Lord, we pray for the same for so many other people who have been exposed as they um, as they are concerned, as they wait the results of their test, Lord. Assure them of your presence and surround them with people who can provide care for them. Lord, we also pray uh, in thanksgiving for um, the fact that you are the giver of all good things. And we pray that you would graft into our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, that is the true worship, Lord, the, the worship uh, that you give us that is done in spirit and in truth that you nourish us with all goodness and of your great mercy, keep us in the same. We pray all these things through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, let's conclude with Luther's um, uh, morning prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Well, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace now and forever. Amen. Have a wonderful day in the Lord.